on our list of tasks to do today <laughs> will be Alicia Martin with our prayer. Amen. 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 May we all stand for prayer? Lord, I would just thank you for this opportunity on today, Father God. We pray, God, that you will continue to lead us and guide us in this service, God. We pray, God, that you will take away any nerves that we have, Father God. Continue to word our mouth and our actions, Father God. Continue to let us love one another, Lord Jesus, and continue to let us worship you, Father God. We thank you, God, that for the free reign that you have given us, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we shall come in and want to worship you, Father God. We thank you, God, that everything shall be done decently and in order, Father God. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you continue to move by your spirit in this ministry, God. Continue to use us any way that you see fit, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next, we'll be having our scripture by Kathy Martin. I will read from Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Today our theme is Millennial Takeover. Our scripture is Philippians 3, 13 through 14. And before we go further in the service, I just want to say, you guys, let's get into the spirit of the millennials. Let's let's support them. Let's not sit on God, let God move. Um, we also have, I don't know what script y'all crazy. Um, we have a hashtag. So our hashtag is up on the screen. It's Millennials Worship 2. We encourage you guys, if you want to Snapchat something that you like, Snapchat it. If you want to record it, record it. Put our Snapchat on there as well. Amen? Amen. 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 Next, we will be having our welcome by Maria Camarena. Today. Now, 
now we can open up our past, but don't dwell on it. We can open up our past just to become better and be a mighty woman and a mighty God, I mean, mighty man in God. Okay, so for the best, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So I feel like Paul was telling us he's not going to forget, um, he's going to forget everything that's going on back that was in the past. Okay, so, um, and he's going to reach forth to his goal. He's going to reach and just press forward and get his goal. So we need to to set ourselves forward and get our goal. We need to be committed. We can't just all say it and not be committed. We need to know and even though we didn't have a good example in front of us, we just have to go forth and get it. And we can't just put no action to it. We have to just go. We have, we have to leave everything behind. We need to press forward. We need to give what's in front of us, whether that's your job, whether that's being closer to Jesus, whether that's asking for forgiveness for someone that did something to you in the past. We just need to go forward. So I press for the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. So God is telling us to press. That means pray, uh, fast, do everything you have to do to get through your storm. We all go through stuff. And it's just about what we come out of and what gets us just what gets us to basically come out of it is who you are today. And just let God lead us. Let God lead us. He don't need no GPS. He can lead us to where he needs to go. He can lead us to him. But there's one thing that we need to do. We need to stay hungry. We need to stay hungry. So by staying hungry, we need to read our word. We need to get into it. And by staying humble, just because God gives you something, don't get a big head about it. Just do it. Just do it. And we all go through a storm. So just declare yourself and just declare you will get through it. And the one person that is holding us back is ourselves. And stop blaming the devil for everything that we go through. So God don't want us to be handling our struggles. God wants us to give it to him. Just stop holding on to it. Just give it to him. What's the heart about giving it to him? We're just holding ourselves back. And on that note, I'm pressing forward, and I'm letting nothing hold me back. Amen? Amen. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and right. lean not unto thy own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and, they, and he shall direct your path, yeah. thy path. Yeah. Amen? Amen.
but he is still learning the gospel. He is still learning, even though he was a mighty man of God, he was anointed. He was a he was a warrior. He was a fighter. He was still knowing, and he was letting the people know, I'm not big headed, and I don't feel like I know everything or I could do everything. But he is arrested, and he is arrested for God. He is arrested to do what the Lord told him to do. He is arrested to go higher in the Lord. So then Paul goes to let you know that one thing you have to do to grow in the Lord, you have to forget your past. You got the things that have hurt you, you have to be able to forgive and forget. Because if not, that will start affecting your prayer life. That will start affecting the things to keep you from going higher. So so when you forget your past, you gotta forget the things that have you bound in the world. You gotta forget those things that have you bound. See, I don't think there's nobody that can hold a grudge like my mom. Because you make one of us mad. You make one of us mad, we'll hold it for a week, a month, and we don't see you, it's just that much easier to hold it against you. Even though we say we forgive you, but next time I see you, it's going to pop up, and I'm going to stay away from you and walk the other way. So just so I don't have to talk to you. So that grudge is still in me. So I don't think there's things that the millennial will hold that grudge instead of forgetting and giving it to God and let God take it away. Be, let him be your problem solver. So, <clears throat> you, you got to let the past be the past and start aiming for a new goal and not holding grudges. You have to start aiming to go higher in the Lord instead of higher in the world. So what the world will take you, the Lord will take you higher. Yeah. As high as the world will take you, you think you're high, but you're really low. So you got to be able to aim high in the Lord. You got to be faithful to God and let God be able to minister to your heart. Amen? Amen. So, so, so while I was reading this, it started popping in my head because me, all these things of you got to change, you got to forget your past, you got to be able to be somebody new in God. So when you come to God, you don't come with your old problems. Well, we come with our old problems. But I can hear Paul say in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. So that means when he came, came to God, all his past became old. He forgot his past. And he became a new creature, preaching the gospel. And instead of killing the Christian, he was preaching to the Christian. Amen? Amen. So when you start to dwell on your past and start and, and on everything that you used to do, it becomes a stumbling block. Not just to you, but it could become a stumbling block to your friend that's in church. Because you start dwelling on, on the world. You start thinking that you're missing something out there when you're not. When you go to the world, you're only doing the same thing over and over and over. It may seem different. Just the day is different, but the routine is the same. So, 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 when, so when it becomes a stumbling block, it becomes a hindrance to your spiritual life and to your prayer life. You will not, you're not able to get in tune with the Spirit of the Lord. You're not, in, you're not able to get in tune to pray through because, because you're too focused on the past. You're focused on what happened to you. You're focused on, on, you're focused on thinking you're missing something that you're not in the world. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> see, there's one thing, see, it, it's one thing to, it's one thing doing something and the past pop up. Because when the past pop up, Usually it's a thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Because you're praising him for what he's grown you up. You're praising him. And you're thanking him. And you're worshiping him in the past. Because you know where he brought you from. So when so, so when I got down to, to verse 14, I pressed for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The word that stuck out the most to me was the word spread. Because it's so hard, it's so easy to give up when you're going through. When you're going in a storm, it's so hard to give up and forget and not come to church. But it's a thing Paul says, I press. So that means when he's going through, when temptation came, he still pressed. When it didn't look like he was going to make it, he still pressed. When it looked like all, all his bills was up, 
above him and take an oath. He still pressed to the mark of the high call. Well, what is the mark of the high call? Going higher in the Lord. Finishing this race and hearing the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So, so we got to be able to press even as millennials. We got a lot of challenges with prayer pressure and everything, but you can't let that stop. You got to press to come to the house of the Lord. You got to press to change. You got to press in your prayer life. You got to press to go higher to meet that mark. And then <clears throat> you got to be able to, <clears throat> because your times get hard and you want to give up, but you, but you got to press through. When the storm comes, you got to press. When you, when you feel like you're going to lose your mind, you got to press. you got to be able to receive the Lord at all times in a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Show y'all how to tear the roof off. Now, man, 
y'all one more time. If millennials know how to do it, don't nobody know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah.
want something sweet, we got cupcakes. You want something sweet, we got cookies. Amen. We got it going on up in here. Amen. Amen. We get ready. How did y'all like that step? They fooled me with that.
Josh has them on, I think. And my husband has them on. So I have one for the doctor for, you know, and then one for. Ooh! All right. I went for a normal checkup. <laughs> I went for a normal checkup and they did an uh, ultrasound because I was having pain that was not normal. And they told me they seen cancer on my uterus. And me forgetting the God that I serve, I freaked out. I couldn't sleep. I would just cry anywhere. I could be at work, I would just break down. To the point where I was getting frustrated with my fiance and everybody else. I didn't want to deal with my son. I was just really frustrated. And then I went back for blood work. And they called me while I was at work and they told me that they had seen uh, blood cells in my blood work. So then after that, I was just like, you know, forget it. It is what it is. And then people would put stuff in my head telling me I was going to be able to see my son. That I was going to die because I told them, I'm not doing chemo. I'm not doing radiation because I know the God I serve, He is going to heal me. That's all right. <laughs> right. So when I went back, they did another ultrasound, and it wasn't fair no more. Hallelujah. Yeah. But they wasn't understanding why was my blood work coming back positive, and then they had the nurse tell me that. It was the cancer probably went somewhere else when I know that's not possible. That's right. So I just thank our pastor. Amen. I thank Marcy. I just thank our church and everybody else who gave me the strength and let me know that God is real. Thank <laughs> you. 
on the move. Amen. Next we'll be having an, another student speaker. I'm thinking if I should embarrass you or not, but <laughs> I've known Duche for quite some time. Uh, I knew Duche when she was a little girl wearing glasses in the music. Amen. Uh, me and Duche, we used to on the play team together. We used to be mad at each other. We had different differences, but we came together for our millennial takeover this Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Now we give it over to our very own Duche Alice.
right now. Dead end. And that's where we're at right now. That's where we're at. Where I want to be is right here. Clear path. Because who's walking in front of me, leading me? And as Pastor was saying this morning, I don't want anything else than what God has for me. That's I don't right, want anything right. less than what God has for me. So if God tells me I'm going to take 16 steps all the way down to where he is, I'm not going to stand behind a table, take six steps, and think that's it. Come Amen? On. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding me here, people of God? Yes. Amen. 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 And I think that we, we agree to things. We agree to things and we never even felt what we're agreeing to. Mm. We can agree to Cherie. Teresa said she got healed. She's healed in the name of Jesus. That's right. We're all so hyped about her receiving her miracle. Put yourself in her shoes. Come on. Come on. Right. Do we have the faith Come that on. she has right now to fight through it? Come on. Do we, in this moment, have the faith that she has to step through and say, I am healed. I'm cancer free. There is not one bit of blood in me that says cancer on it. That's right. Would we have had that faith? And that's what I'm here to say today, people of God. Just this call this. Step outside of the cultural norm. Step outside of what your friends are doing. Step outside of what you think is in, what you think is popular. And as we say, what's popping? Like, no. And I'm talking millennial terms right now. Step outside of it. Step outside of it. What we think is cool to other people, where's going to lead us to? Are we at the dead end table? Are we walking down the 16 steps that God called us to meet him? Are we walking behind somebody who doesn't even know where they're going? Or are we stepping out on faith and following God how he has told us to? We need to build up the faith, people of God. And this is not just for millennials. Build up your faith. Build up your faith. There should be no point in time where we stop trusting God. There is no point where we should give up and say, God, you're not worthy. There is no point where we should stop and say, God's not going to do what he said he's going to do. There should be no point in time. And I'm getting a little bit off my notes, but I want you guys to understand that as millennials, we're calling them millennials on the move because we made the choice as a whole to get it together. Amen? Amen. We made the choice as a whole to step out on faith and to walk in our calling in God. Amen? You guys heard us as we were stepping. Tina, God's light shines through me. So wherever she goes, God's light is going to shine through me. Teresa, I love God. Wherever she goes, people are going to know that she loves God. Yeah. Alicia, prayer warrior, wherever she goes, yeah. somebody's going to feel like they need to pray. Somebody's going to feel the power of God when she walks into a room. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? When I say that I am anointed, when I walk into the room, whoever's smoking they need has to stop. Buckle down and know that God will rise. Amen. I don't need to have a 
sharing with us. God, I trust you. Yeah. I don't need to know where we're going, God. I don't need a GPS. Take me where you want me to go because my faith is in you. My trust is in you. My love is in you. My hope is in you. Amen? Amen. 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 And people of God, millennials, all you guys that are here, we thank you so much for coming, but we need you guys to understand this is not just a simple invite. Come on. This is not just a simple, hey, come see me, step my step, and sing my song. This is a deliverance ministry. That's right. Where deliverance is a reality. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just because it's a millennial service does not mean that there is no power in here. Amen? Amen. Everybody, not 
Amen. Amen. And I just want to end with this very last scripture. Because I know that we are to group. Therefore, you guys make this oath. Remember, remember the scripture is coming to y'all. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Amen. I read it one more time because I don't think y'all caught it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Aren't we already in Christ? Oh. Is this past or present? We're already in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I am a new creature in God today. I don't know about y'all, but I am stepping into my calling. I am stepping into my anointing. I will not allow my friends, my, my family, anybody who comes in contact with me to stray me away from what God has for me anymore. Amen? I am a millennial on the move. Amen? Amen. Five hundred likes. Who's that mighty woman of God? And 
he sitting up there, man, I done turned in my prayer card. <laughs> This is my brother-in-law. He's been part of our family forever. Amen. So, so what can we thank God for? The millennium, this is the first one. You guys are going to have many more. And like I say, it's going to get packed out up in here. It's already packed out up in here. It's already packed out up in here. We had something this morning that we tried to bring back this evening, but I was so wore out. I went home and went to sleep. And by the time I got the text, it was too late. How many enjoyed the violin solo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's possible. Yeah. That, that's what I'll put that thing on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like uh, Mozart was in there himself. She yeah. went through the. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I ain't mean, that girl got healed. Yeah. Yeah. I like when the shade was like, the shade made noise. She said, Zin, Zin, Zin. <laughs> Which, <laughs> she's a true mother. She said, no matter how bad your daughter is, she's going to do it. Amen. <laughs> so, but we thank God for our future. Our young people are coming up to be millenniums, and they have something to look forward to. Amen. You guys, I am so proud of y'all. Y'all can do it 50. You spoke good. Yeah. You spoke good. Yeah. Oh, good. So, uh, thank God for well, all y'all. All y'all did. I have one brother that's married to a millennium, and he's not a millennium. I said, don't you feel old? <laughs> Your wife is a millennium, and here you are, Generation X. And then, and then I thought about it. I said, hey, man, that's your broke. You got it going on. All right, we get ready to close. Now, listen, we don't want you to just run out. We want you to go get some tacos. And I'm going to say it like this. We got Mexicans in here that can cook some real Mexicans. Cynthia, raise your hand. She gets down. She gets then. Uh, oh, we have we have an asada and what? And chicken. And Sister Taylor, you cook the chicken. And Sister Taylor gets down with the chicken. Okay. So you don't have to go home early. Uh, home. Cynthia cooks some real good tacos. Amen. So go patronize us. I don't know the price of nothing. They don't either. How much is the cupcake? Anybody says, how much is a cookie? Two dollars. Two dollars. So if you feel sweet, get you a cupcake. Yeah. You won't have a honey to go to buy some cupcakes. Everybody's standing, and the millennials going to come this way. Well. Well, we thank you for another evening, day, Father God. We thank you for the service, Father God. We thank you for being over the service and moving, Father God. We thank you for the millennials we have here, Father God, and, and being on the move, Father God. We thank you for the old, Father God. And we ask that you please continue to have your hands over our lives and protect us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand.